Hi, my name is Cecilia Peterson, and I'm a third year medical student at the University of Utah School of Medicine. Over the last two years, I have been working with faculty members from the schools of nursing and pharmacy on revalidating the interprofessional attitude scale, otherwise known as IPASS. IPASS was first developed in 2015, and it was and continues to be the only validated scale examining interprofessional attitudes using the IPEC core competencies. We have recently updated IPASS and revalidated it to a newer version that we're calling IPASS 2.0. And it includes 27 questions with four different domains. For this project, we used IPASS 2.0 to examine differences in interprofessional attitudes between novice and experienced learners in a variety of health professions related colleges at the University of Utah. Our novice cohort consisted of students who've completed less than three semesters in their health professions program and who completed IPASS prior to the foundations of IPE course. And this is the first IPE course that most students at the University of Utah take. The experience cohort consisted of students with four or more semesters of experience in their health professions program who completed IPASS following the transitions of care course which is um, the last course that most students at the University of Utah take. And I should say the last interprofessional education course that most students at the University of Utah take. For this analysis, we used a two-way ANOVA to compare the novice and experienced groups by college with college IPE experience and interaction of college with IPE as factors. Post hoc comparisons for significant terms were also utilized. And we analyzed data from the following colleges or schools, the College of Health, the College of Nursing, the College of Pharmacy, the School of Medicine, and the Graduate Nursing Program. And I also want to note that IPASS 2.0 includes four different domains that we called dynamic team leadership, teamwork roles and responsibilities, patient-centeredness, and patient advocacy. Our results can be seen in the middle of our poster, and um, they include that we found that the School of Medicine scored lower in all four domains when compared to learners from the other schools we analyzed. Additionally, we found that experienced learners in the School of Medicine scored lower on IPASS 2.0 compared to novice learners. Um, the College of Health showed increases in dynamic team leadership. So experienced learners had higher scores in dynamic team leadership than novice learners. And the College of Nursing showed decreases in patient-centeredness and patient advocacy with experienced learners scoring lower in these domains of IPASS 2.0 than novice learners. All other comparisons were not statistically significant. And our graphs in the middle of this poster um, illustrate our findings in the dynamic team leadership and the teamwork roles and responsibility domains. So in terms of what these results mean, our analysis does show that there may be a difference in interprofessional attitudes, specifically when comparing students in the School of Medicine, which includes students in MD programs and physician's assistant programs, to other students in a variety of different healthcare professions programs at the University of Utah. Um, it also may show that students in the School of Medicine react differently in terms of changes in their interprofessional attitudes compared to students in other schools. However, we encourage um, that these results be viewed with caution. 
Our analysis of this data using IPASS 2.0 showed a significant ceiling effect that made um, making comparisons and drawing conclusions from those comparisons very difficult. Um, after looking more at our data from this project, we have decided to take time to further examine IPASS 2.0 and specifically the ceiling effect that these results have illustrated. Um, I do want to point out that there was also a ceiling effect found in IPASS 1.0. And um, one of the goals in making some changes in the new scale was to try and decrease the ceiling effect. Um, so our further analysis in terms of validating IPASS 2.0 is to make sure that we have not inadvertently selected questions that make the ceiling effect more significant in IPASS 2.0 compared to the original IPASS 1.0, and to ensure that IPASS 2.0 is indeed measuring what we intend it to measure, which is interprofessional attitudes. Um, and I want to conclude by stating that we're very motivated to continue the work with IPASS 2.0 and ensure that we can develop a well-validated tool. Um, there's a very large amount of data that we already have um, collected from students over the years, both before and after completing a variety of interprofessional education courses at the University of Utah. And further validating and ensuring that IPASS 2.0 is a strong tool to use will enable us to keep asking more questions about interprofessional education and interprofessional attitudes um, and interpreting those results and developing new and innovative curriculums for interprofessional education. Thank you very much.